Good morning. Hey, what's up? This is Brian Kuzmar with Commercial Rare Coins and Precious Metals and ConcierbeBullion.com in beautiful Lauderdale by the sea. Got the uh, live Miami underwater cam up here. Uh, quite active in the uh, water quality. Looks, I mean, the water vis visibility looks really good today. Lots of fishes out there enjoying all that uh, floating stuff going by. I guess some of it might be food as well. All right, let's get into. Wow, those are pretty, aren't they? Uh, and if you're interested in watching this yourself and you're new to my videos, it's Coral City Camera. It's one of uh, South Florida's, uh, I think, uh, most beautiful underwater cams. We've got a few. John Pennekamp I usually show. And our, uh, our uh, underwater cam here up in uh, uh, Deerfield Beach at the Deerfield Beach Pier. All right. It's 77. Uh, not 77. I don't even know what it is right now. It was a little cooler this morning. Probably warmed up a bit since I got here in the office uh, to do the video here. Uh, and again, this is the uh, weekend uh, wrap-up for last week, and uh, I guess it's really the uh, thank God I made it through Friday video, too, <laughs> so I could call it that. All of us, thank God we made it the Friday video again. Man, those are beautiful. Look at those blue fish. Absolutely lovely colors. Uh, can any of you name what that blue fish was? And these guys right here as well with those dots on their tail. Um, boy, that's a... Not a pair of Anyways, this is not a fish or an underwater uh, 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 tropical fish show. So <laughs> let's get into today's video. It's just really beautiful out there today. I could just sit here with my coffee and just uh, uh, watch this video. Well, anyways, we're not going to do that. Let's get through this real quick and uh, kind of talk about what's happened last week, what's going on in the news, what's what they tell us is going on, and. Uh, uh, what is actually going on, I guess. And I'm going to get into uh, what the best deals out there and what to stay away from. There's some surprising stuff out there as far as uh, uh, lack of product out there. We're going to look at some of the big online guys, online sellers, and uh, take a look at how dried up they are for resources. Well, anyways, let's. Uh, this is my quote. And are you allowed to write your own quotes? I guess, I guess you are. I did. Here we go. We are no longer a real free market economy. We are now a plutocracy our lives and money are now entirely in, the, entirely in the hands of central bankers and their cronies in business and government. Uh, they're killing the golden goose, which, uh, oh, there we go, people calling already. They're killing the golden goose, which once made us the land of opportunity. The only cure being the United States to go back to a sound money policy backed by gold, decreasing the power of centralized governments that work for this uh, plutocracy. And uh, basically what I'm saying here is, uh, you know, United States was a land of opportunity and the land of opportunity was made by the ability of the free marketplace uh, 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 and the ability of, for people to create businesses without having the huge bureaucracy and taxes and the onerous amount of rules and regulations uh, uh, thrown at them. Much less, uh, let's just get into how fiat dollars, and this is what I'm really talking about, is the central bankers. Everything resolves around what the central bankers do now. Think about this. Uh, the entire stock market, the equities market, the bond market, uh, and all these markets, except for gold and silver, which are really crooked, broken markets, and we'll get into that in a moment, gold and silver. Um, <laughs> well, anyways, maybe they're all crooked and broken. Uh, broken. Uh, but uh, uh, really, it's run by central bankers around the world. And uh, Ferrari? No. <laughs> get a lot of Ferraris right by here. Uh, you get a, uh, the central bankers run the world, folks, and especially the U.S. dollar. Or, or it's actually a power struggle right now. This is what we're seeing. It's a war going on between uh, the East and the West. There's a war between China uh, and the, the U.S. dollar. There's a war between uh, the ruble and the U.S. dollar. There's a war between the Euro and the U.S. dollar. This is a war between central bankers, and that's why it's so messy. The problem is, is people all over the world have allowed central bankers, a handful of people, a handful of people that, yeah, they may have gone to some good colleges and learned stuff about the economy, but man, they have sure fucked it up pretty badly over and over. Uh, and again, these are the people that run the world, folks. And, you know, maybe not if you live in a cave somewhere in Montana or somewhere, you know, uh, but if you live in the real world, not the real, I shouldn't say the real world, maybe the real world should be a, a cave in Montana somewhere, but uh, if you live in the, uh, uh, <laughs> if you live in the world that most of us live in, we're, we're bound by the dollar. You know, the dollar, no matter, it purchases gold. I mean, I know you, all you gold and silver folks say, fuck the fiat dollar, but think about this. It's priced in dollars. We're kind of screwed in that way. You know what I mean? Uh, but then again, that's the purpose of gold and silver is to be a hedge against a uh, fiat dollar. And it works great. And uh, gold and silver has outlived every corporation, country, empire, uh, and uh, central banker out there for sure. And have no doubt, we are in a fiat currency, which has been declining in buying power since what, 1913? 
All right, I digress, but these are some things we're going to talk about. And like I said, I'm going to look at, also tell you what the best deals out there as well uh, for folks that uh, want to fast forward what the best deals are. Uh, but I wouldn't recommend that. I got some good stuff to talk about. And uh, again, they've killed the golden goose, uh, which, uh, you know, at, at, when you have a sound dollar and sound money, what you have is people can create their own destinies at this point. Um, because, again, everything relies on the dollar, how you pay your rent, how you, how, you know, everything pretty much, except, you know, again, this war that we're seeing right now uh, is a war against uh, whose currency is the uh, last horse to the glue factory as far as uh, uh, failing fiat currencies. And I think the United States, the U.S. dollar has been the dominant currency since uh, World War II pretty much. You know, again, the Bretton Woods agreements, all kinds of things. Again, we can jump down a bunch of rabbit holes here, but folks, uh, the, the world is being run by a handful of central bankers uh, and um, mostly uh, our central banks right here, which is backed by the full force of the U.S. military and the CIA. So, <laughs> all right, let me move along. Uh, the only cure, again, is going back to a sound money policy that uh, Ron Paul talked about for many years, and I, I'm just really surprised that Rand doesn't talk about this more. He'd gather a lot more traction if he did. <clears throat> I think Rand has kind of uh, uh, been, uh, 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 what am I going to say, blinded by the Republican Party. I think his father was for many years as well, until the 2008 election when the Republican Party completely fucked him in the primaries. Kind of not too dissimilar what they did to Bernie Sanders. But both those parties suck anyway. Uh, but I digress. Uh, <clears throat> sound money's backed by gold and decreasing the power of centralized governments that work for this plutocracy. Uh, plutocracy. So that's exactly what it is. And for most of you that want to know if I said that correctly, let's take a look. Plutocracy. Plutocracy. I got it right. <laughs> I thought about that for a minute when I was saying that. Uh, but what is a plutocracy? It is a government, gov I mean, here, by definition, one, two, three, a government by the wealthy, a wealthy class that controls a government, a government or state in which the wealthy rule. Well, here you go, folks. Uh, that's what we're living in right now. We are no longer in a free marketplace. We're no longer uh, uh, <clears throat> free people per se because we are being ruled by the almighty U.S. dollar, which rules all our lives. Uh, and uh, and who rules that? Well, this small group of wealthy people, this small group of bankers. All right. So, anyway, what does that have to do with the price of gold and silver? Uh, nothing at the moment because gold and silver markets are just completely freaking broken. But I figured I'd talk about why why this world is such a mess. It has everything to do with fiat currencies. It has everything to do with uh, uh, plutocracy and uh, uh, being governed by the wealthy. All right. And where are we going from here? Boy, that was a mouthful for sure. Uh, boy, lots of lots of traffic. Lots of people walking by today. And it is a beautiful day. That's for sure. All right. This video is brought to you by. The CME Group, the world's leading crooks in the derivative marketplace that controls the COMEX markets and, the, <laughs> and gold and silver. And this is satire, folks. I'm only joking about that. I'm just joking, CME Group. I'm not really saying that you're the world's leading crooks in the uh, derivative marketplace. And uh, it, like it says right there, it should just cross it out and put uh, the world's leading bullshit paper marketplace. Uh, but again, that's just my opinion. And it's comedy, too. I'm, I'm, being, I'm joking about this. Tongue-in-cheek shit. Anyway, here you go. And the video is really not brought to you by CME Group. <laughs> Just joking about that as well. Because uh, I don't think they'd like that advertising. Well, anyways, let's move along here and uh, take a look at something that I've been saying for quite some time. There's been a weird correlation with uh, 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 the gold following uh, the Dow Jones, S&P, and NASDAQ as far as being in the red. Not like percentage-wise, uh, but just all assets, even even solid assets like gold, basically, you know, uh, 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 hedges against inflation, typically have always been hedges, a hedge against inflation, uh, has been following the price of, uh, or have been following the Dow Jones up and down. Uh, I saw a little diversion from that last week where uh, uh, gold was, uh, <clears throat> Gold was in the red, uh, actually, and the uh, uh, equities markets were in the uh, uh, green uh, quite a bit. Uh, but we're going to get into that in a moment and why that happened. Why, why did gold uh, uh, continue to kind of stay down and the uh, equities got a, uh, uh, almost a thousand point bump last week, uh, I think it was last week. Uh, you know, up an up market after crashing over a thousand, or about a thousand, whatever it was, nine to eight hundred, nine hundred points, bumped up eight, nine hundred points, folks. If you remember, you've been watching my videos. This has happened before, and we've talked about this before. And we're going to get into that in a moment as well. Uh, but the correlation here I've been noticing is uh, uh, gold has been following these markets, uh, and the reason I think that gold's following the equities markets because 
the, the narrative is that when rates go up uh, and, and that treasuries and bonds will start to pay more, is that people don't want to put their money in gold because, of course, if you can get a positive real rate in, a, in an investment that pays you a real return and is guaranteed somewhat, you're going to go with that. So that's the assumption, but that's the narrative in which these crooks, these crooked, besides the 50-day uh, and 200-day moving averages, that's the narrative that these crooks use to manipulate the gold and silver markets. It gives the appearance that, oh, look, equities are down and the dollar's going to be strong and no one's going to want equities and gold and silver. Uh, we'll all lump it on, you know. Uh, but meanwhile, the re real reason gold and silver are down is because of uh, crooked criminal behavior in the CME group markets. Uh, the market's broken, folks. Uh, I'm not the only one that's been saying this for quite some time. Uh, and actually, I talked about this years ago about the silver market with a friend of mine, Rob Newton. I don't know if Rob's out there and I don't think he mentioned mine, me mentioning his name, but a smart guy, served on some uh, uh, boards, I guess committees with some silver miners and stuff and knows that business pretty well. And we talked about the, po the point in which uh, uh, there was going to be a separation of the physical markets from the uh, uh, paper bullshit derivative markets that the CME group runs. And uh, we've seen it a couple times kind of come, come to a uh, head. And we're seeing it again here with the separation and the lack of, especially even more so now than I've ever seen, is the lack of physical uh, uh, retail and wholesale silver availability. And again, we're going to get into that in a moment. Uh, but lots of nonsense, lots of bullshit out there. And again, the narrative on which all this is built is U.S. dollar strength. Oh my God, the dollar, DXY is up. Um, uh, and I'm going to attack that uh, uh, belief that the dollar index affects gold and silver. It doesn't, folks. The dollar index doesn't affect gold at, at all because gold, the dollar index is just a temporary comparison of the dollar against the other basket of turds, the other basket of uh, 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 last horses to the glue factory, okay? That's what the dollar index really indicates. It's stronger against the other bullshit uh, fiat currencies. Uh, and not the other bullshit central banks, all right? That's the only thing it implies. It doesn't mean you're buying more at all. Uh, so dollar strength has nothing to do with the price of gold uh, going up, I mean going down, and silver going down. Again, that's a narrative you'll hear from the uh, people that can't see beyond their graphs, uh, who, w good intention people that can't see beyond the graphs, uh, can't see the big picture, uh, get too caught up in the details. Well, of course, gold's going down. It's real, real, uh, real yields right now. Bullshit. I mean, there are no real yields right now. Uh, uh, the uh, CPI numbers that they give us, which have been the worst since how long? Oh my gosh, uh, are completely bullshit and are probably off by double anyway. All right, so let me move out of that. Dollar strength does not mean the price of gold and silver should go down. In fact, uh, this is what causes the price of gold and silver to go down. I mean, go up right here. And, and has been for years and years and years. Uh, it's called the uh, Consumer Price Index for Urban Consumers, Purchasing Power of the Consumer Dollar in the Average U.S. City. Uh, this is a real graph right here, but the problem with this graph, it's based on bullshit data. The, uh, the uh, CPI that they use is actually uh, probably even worse, but you can get an idea. Even though the CPI is probably 50% uh, uh, or maybe even double what they're actually using for these graphs right here, uh, the general consensus is this downward movement in fiat currencies. So really all you've got, again, the dollar is, is, is battling all these other currencies right now. Again, don't forget this war, you know, the war that you got going on uh, with the Chinese, with the Russians, uh, they nothing to do with, you know, oh, you're a bad guy. You're a good. This is all central banking wars. I mean, again, central bankers make money off wars too because they fund both sides oftentimes and they fund the weapon makers and they, you know, but <clears throat> folks, this world's being run by a handful of bankers, uh, and uh, don't you not believe that they don't have a hand in these wars and all this bad shit's going on? Uh, and and boy, and you know what the thing is, they probably honestly believe they're they're doing the right thing or trying to do the right thing. Maybe I I, I, I refuse to believe that they're just evil evil people or or what some uh, conspiracists call <laughs> lizard people. <laughs> anyway, I'm not gonna get into lizard people. Uh, <laughs> Anyways, the dollar, this is why you need to own gold and silver because all you got to take this line right here and invert it. Turn it upside down and that's what you're going to see with the price of gold. Back here, back in this time, the 1920s, you could take a $20 bill made by the uh, uh, $20 fiat bill, which would be the 1929, it uh, wasn't payable in gold, I think it was a 1929 uh, uh, Federal Reserve notes and 1929, uh, 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 oh my gosh. Uh, well, anyways, the ones that were issued by the banks, nationals, 29 nationals, 
uh, which were not backed by gold and silver, I don't believe. Oh, maybe they were. Uh, but uh, uh, you could put that $20 gold, uh, that $20 bill underneath your mattress in 1920s right here, and you put that $20 gold piece, which was circulating at the same time as a $20 bill before the federal bank took over, uh, and put that under your mattress and do a Rip Van Winkle and wake up here, you will find that your $20 piece of currency, uh, a Federal Reserve currency, you know, remember that's when the Fed started, uh, took over uh, and took us off the gold standard, kind of, um, uh, will buy basically, what would $20 buy you right now? You know, all right? And, but even gold in its most battered form right now at, at 1600 and change, what will that buy you, okay? So there's the great comparison. And this is the reason you need to own gold and silver for medium and long-term wealth preservation, mostly. Uh, but, but again, this market, gold and silver markets are so broken. They've been held down so low artificially by these crooked markets and these crooked Crimex Comics markets. Remember, that's my opinion and the opinions of people much smarter than me as well, uh, that... Uh, um, uh, I think that uh, they're going to have an explosive upside movement, and then they'll kind of maybe settle where they need to be, uh, providing that uh, we don't see any more uh, monkey hammering in the uh, CME group and uh, comics markets. But I don't trust the CME group. I don't trust that they're ever going to fix anything with this. I think uh, uh, that they've allowed it to happen so long that even if they tried to fix, even if this uh, crooked group right here tried to fix uh, the, the uh, uh, bullshit paper market and gold and silver, um, you know, it would probably, well, not probably, I don't know, maybe behind the scenes they are trying to fix it. I kind of doubt it, though. Um, I just I just don't feel it, especially when you see that uh, silver was just recently capped in price again. Uh, so uh, as Ted Butler was hoping for is that they've stopped this capping, but <sighs> Ted Butler does point out, and I agree 100%, that we're going to be in a supply and demand situation here, especially with silver folks. There ain't much out there. All right, so uh, uh, all this nonsense out here, the consumer price index is really what tells the tale here. Um, and uh, uh, where am I going with this? Well, <clears throat> yes, let's talk about the smackdowns that we saw this week with uh, the price of gold and silver. Uh, again, basically just in the CME group, just in the COMEX markets, a paper smackdown in these criminal markets. And uh, I want to get into something here that I think is kind of interesting. We talked about this a few times, a good article we're going to get into, uh, done by uh, BBL. I think his name is Vince. God, I forgot already. Um, I've read a lot of his stuff. Super nice guy, too. Uh, Pam and Russ Martins. We've talked about this. The Meet the Fed's Global Plunge. In fact, I posted this article back in May. Uh, remember back in May when we saw that, like, a uh, uh, thousand point drop or some crazy drop in the Dow, and then, like, next day, like, magically it went up under, it went up dramatically? Well, you know, my first thought was, all right, that's the plunge protection team. They went in, they propped up that market. You know, while, while the Fed does want to see the stock market go down, they want, don't want to see an overnight collapse. It just, that's like an avalanche. It, it feeds on itself. So uh, I believe that the plunge protection team, even before this period right here, even before the last smackdown, when they I think they, they went in there and uh, uh, threw a lot of money into it, I believe that the, uh, oh, sorry about that, folks. Uh, I should have put the phones in the other room. Um, I believe that the uh, 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 the uh, plunge protection team, the presidential working group, no, this is not a conspiracy. Look it up yourself. They exist. Uh, it has been propping up the uh, uh, equities markets and, and keeping it from doing one of those diving off a cliff things. Uh, again, they want to take it down, but they don't want it to go down overnight. They don't want it in an avalanche. In fact, it's just what I told you. These fucks control everything. Look, the, the Dow Jones, you think that that's organic, what we saw this last week? You think it was organic that the uh, uh, stock, or well, organic that the, the market went down because it's, it's so full of shit and hot air uh, that it needs to go down? You know, the, the whole stock and equities market it was entirely built, another Fed bubble, another Fed-fueled bubble, not unlike the housing bubble, not unlike the, uh, all the other bubbles we've seen, uh, but this is the fiat bubble. This is uh, <laughs> so much bigger. And uh, uh, more or less, uh, 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 Pam and Russ, and uh, I've been talking about it for a long time, uh, Martin's uh, uh, pointed out that uh, that was probably intervention by the plunge protection team. And where am I going with this? Good article, again, by VBL. Uh, in the uh, Zero Hedge and some other places, I think they post this stuff. And I want to read this to you. It shouldn't take that long. Um, housekeeping, here's a quick synopsis of what uh, happened yesterday in no uncertain terms. There are only a couple good write-ups in various uh, drivers of the CPI. Admit. Here is our intended complementary Zero Hedge. Okay, all right, updated. One logical question to, be, uh, to this could be, why would the Fed support stocks if their stated goals decrease wealth effect and lower demand, thereby ideally lowering inflation? 
we just talked about that kind of, and, and he goes into it in more detail. I like it. Uh, the answer to that question is in the comments. The short version is they are not stopping the descent, just slowing it, right? Uh, VBL gets it, Vince gets it entirely here, and that basically uh, he just said it in a short sentence better than I did uh, blabbing for about five minutes. <laughs> All right, good on him. Uh, kudos, uh, Vince, uh, which supports the larger point. It ain't just about the U.S. The PPT is uh, protecting the world now, all right? And Vince gets into a great point here. CPI came out 8.30 hotter. Uh, all right, stocks open at 9.30, made their low for the day. Then then there they are, okay? Then in no headline trigger to uh, other than the CPI itself, stocks have the most astounding reversal anyone has seen since March of 2020. Uh, Vince, i got to remind you, we did, uh, I think in last May or before that, we... we May, April, May, we saw a uh, uh, one of those uh, re big giant reversals as well, I believe. Uh, why such a massive rally if VIX was so low at this time? And okay, let's get down here uh, when VBL talks why did it happen. And uh, give me one second here, sip of coffee. Uh, Colombian uh, uh, beans, uh, ground in uh, conical grounder with uh, French press at the perfect temperature makes a great cup of coffee. Mm. Okay. And when you get your Colombian beans, make sure they're nice and oily. <laughs> it's a coffee show. All right. I don't know where that came from. Uh, there were indicators that something like this could happen, but nowhere near the magnitude that it did. One indicator was the market participants were the least long they had been in a long time. Um, uh, Vince uh, actually is a very intelligent dude and, uh, uh, you know, is a chart guy himself. But I think he, you know, a lot of chart guys, I think, get caught up in the charts. They get caught up in the micro you know the micro environment. They get. I, I, I'm not sure micro would be the right word to use, but the uh, they get caught up in the small details. They get caught up in all uh, all the small stuff, and and then they stop questioning. You know, they don't step outside and look at the big picture and question. Well, what the hell just happened? Actually, really, why did this market make a huge reversal? Um, but okay, let me. Uh, I don't want to go off again. A lot of rabbit holes here. Uh, translation sentiment has completely bombed out. Yes, a CPI may come in hot and will likely lead to, lead to more selling, at least initially, but everyone is already positioned for this. Goldman CPI uh, pre-report. Bottom line is, is everyone was short and wanted to be short. Add to that a group that had been buying calls for CPI, a pivot soon after. Uh, let me kind of move along here because this is more technical stuff, and I really high, uh, highly advise you read this. Um, this happened, and uh, we believe the VIX is being kept down. Stocks to uh, the VIX panic, like gold futures, uh, and soon oil is broken. All right. Uh, interesting comment here that uh, the VIX, like gold futures, you know, I've been telling you, the silver market's completely broken. The gold futures market is definitely broken. And I guess what Bents is saying is that the VIX and oil is broken. And what is that a result of, folks? Pure, sheer manipulation. Nothing less than that. And Vince gets it. He sees it in the charts. And I believe he's also a guy that looks at the big picture and can step outside the planet and look at the whole planet as a whole and see where everything's going. Macro view. I like that. Uh, how to explain it. Return of the plunge protection team. Yesterday we made a comment on Twitter regarding gold and silver that actually applies to stocks as well. We stated that the reason gold and silver rallied along with stocks but could not follow through there was no small part because of the precious metals futures. <laughs> Folks. I'm not going to read uh, uh, much farther than this because this really nailed it for me. And, and I love what he said right here. Uh, again, he's able to say it in like a, a paragraph where it takes me like 10 minutes to talk about it. <laughs> uh, made a Twitter uh, a gold and silver that applies to stocks as well. So what Bench is saying here is that, that uh, he understands and sees that the gold and silver markets are broken. They absolutely are broken. But meanwhile, provides these broken markets broken to the downside are providing you guys wonderful opportunities. It really is. you got to look at it as a gift, you know. Uh, and don't look a gift horse in the mouth. Um, well, anyway, uh, rallied along with stocks, we can follow this. There's no small part because the precious metals futures market is broken. Absolutely true. Uh, nice to hear him say that. Uh, I'm sure he said it before, but uh, I like the way he said it as well. Decades of ma manipulation in the precious metal markets, and I'm, I guess he's talking about the stock markets as well, have demoralized players from expecting any sort of appropriate response to new item, news items. Therefore, if your goal is to make money in futures trading, you put it what you put it in what gives you a return. You rob banks because that is where the money is, so to speak. There is no money uh, in being long comex futures. Oh man, uh, the same is true of stocks. All right, even Vince goes into talking about stocks and and uh, other things here, folks. Wonderful article in Zero Hedge. Uh, let me give you the title of it. And uh, uh, update, return of the plunge protection team. Read this by VBL. Uh, you read this and you'll be smarter than 98% of your neighbors. 
All right, let me get into uh, just basically, look, we're looking around the world, all kinds of things going in here. Now, folks, don't you, don't you confuse um, capitulation, uh, stronger dollar, uh, uh, higher interest rates, uh, CPIs. Don't you confuse that with why gold and silver are where they are right now. The only reason gold and silver are as low as they are right now is, is pure, sheer manipulation and this crooked uh, uh, leading marketplace of, uh, of bullshit paper. Uh, and again, that's my opinion and the opinion of people much smarter than myself as well. And uh, we've been talking about this for years. It's finally getting mainstream. I think more and more people realize. Um, and, you know, big writers, you know, writers like VBL, big writers. <laughs> uh, yes, Vince, I think you're a big writer. Uh, VBL and these guys, a lot of guys out there are starting to really see this. And it's so obvious that you can't unsee it, all right? Uh, and you can't unbelieve it. All right, let me uh, move into all this news. It has nothing to do... Uh, there's another, uh, uh, I think Vince was talking about, this is probably plunge protection team, Fed, but in the open way. Uh, sends a record $6 billion. That's the uh, plunge protection team saving the world right now. So not only, folks, is the U.S. dollar trying to save the U.S. economy, they're trying to save the world as well. Who do they really work for, us or the world? Neither, folks. They work for themselves and their cronies. Don't forget that. Never forget that. They're not working for anybody. Not the average worker, not the average guy. They work for themselves and the cronies. Um, let's see here, nothing good to come out of uh, Joe Biden's uh, conflict right here, uh, created by Joe Biden, fueled by Joe Biden, uh, and uh, going to break, uh, break the piggy bank by Joe Biden. Fucking idiot, in my opinion. Uh, all right, not much to talk about here. I can go off to all this stuff, but you know, all of us are so sick of this stuff. You know, and honestly, uh, every morning I wake up, I, uh, 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 I hope that this war ends. You know, it's just sickening. It's sickening. Whether it's Russian or Ukrainians, that, that's just sickening. Uh, some mother, brother, sister, father, uh, uh, best friend, whatever, has to wake up and hear uh, somebody they love died, regardless of which side it's on. And the truth of the matter is, follow the fucking money. Who's making money off these poor kids dying and these poor people dying on both sides? Who's making the fucking money? Central bankers are in the industrial military complex. But again, that's a rabbit hole I've been down many times. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Let's take a look at yesterday's closing prices. Fucking monkey hammered to hell. Sorry about that. It is Saturday morning. It's a little bit early. Uh, but uh, uh, caffeine does not prevent my mouth from going off sometimes. <laughs> uh, 1667, 1890, 903. Um, uh, one thing I want to mention here, uh, for the longest time I've been saying platinum's kind of been a tell in a weird way. It seems like uh, when platinum started to go down, when, when gold and silver were in the green, platinum starts to go in the red, uh, within a few short days, gold and silver seem to follow, all right? And vice versa. Uh, this is an odd close. Take a look at that. Platinum up 15 bucks. Other markets, uh, markets down as well. Um, maybe platinum's telegraphing something, maybe, uh, or maybe there's just not as many criminals in the uh, platinum market right now as there are in the gold and silver markets. Uh, but no less kind of an odd observation from a macro viewpoint that I've noticed here, uh, that platinum uh, over the last several months uh, seems to uh, have, be like a little tell that the other metals are going to go up or down. Uh, let's see what happens. Uh, platinum up right now, let's see if uh, gold and silver go up on uh, Sunday night or Monday. Uh, and uh, where platinum goes as well. Keep an eye on that. Let me know what you think. All right. What's the best deals out there, folks? They are not gold eagles. They are not gold eagles. They are not gold eagles. Uh, stay away from gold eagles uh, for many reasons. Uh, not because they're not pretty and I'd like you to buy American, but the fact that they're just way freaking overpriced. They're overpriced. There's no good reason to spend that money. You could buy a gold bar plus, hang on, let me think here, uh, plus uh, uh, for da, 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 five by three, uh, for probably you could buy a gold bar, a bar plus four or five ounces of silver uh, for the same price that you'd have to pay for a gold eagle right now. So what's a better deal? Uh, a gold bar with four or five ounces of silver or a gold eagle? Ah, I can tell you it's pretty damn obvious to me. There's no good reason to own gold, so gold eagles at these prices or buffaloes at these prices. Uh, gold bars are spot plus 74 bucks here at uh, Commercial Rare Coins and Precious Metals and ConsideraBullion.com. Uh, as you know, I advertise to be Atmex, SD, and JD, JD, JM Bullion on their uh, competitively priced products. I don't even try to stock the kind of shiny shit that some of those guys carry, and they have a lot of money. They can carry whatever they want. Uh, but on the, uh, on the products that you probably should be buying, competitively priced products, and dust, you know, uh, recognized by the industry, uh, I will beat their prices. And I'll also beat the locals down here in South Florida. Uh, there's my little advertising right there. 
So I pretty much tell you what the best deals in gold are. Uh, I think uh, availability on gold is getting a little bit tight in uh, the coin form uh, as far as sovereign uh, coins go. I think KR is a little bit delayed right now, Kruger Rands. Uh, so South African Mint is probably having a little bit of issue trying to keep up with uh, demand. Listen, folks. There are silver for sure. Silver, like the uh, supply and demand factors are so overwhelming right now. The uh, uh, supply uh, is very slim and slim to none as far as available for sale silver, not above ground availability. Oh, there's 50 billion ounces above ground. No, available for sale silver is so slim right now in the retail and wholesale markets. Um, and the, uh, uh, the demand is just off the freaking hook, all right? Uh, and 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 again, you can tell that silver market's so fucking broken by the price. It doesn't in, it doesn't indicate that. But at some point, the uh, uh, again uh, supply and demand factors are going to come into big play, and this is probably when you're going to see your double up, triple up, quadruple up in the price of silver when when they do finally run out of available silver and their paper derivative bullshit market goes to hell. Uh, as far as silver goes, what's the best deal out there in silver? Uh, I don't have to show you what a silver bar looks like, but 100 ounce bars are still a good deal. Uh, spot plus four and a quarter or less. Same with kilos. Uh, one ounce bars are just off the hook crazy. They're, I mean, listen, I, I'm not even comfortable advising people to buy one ounce bars. In fact, take a look at this. Uh, SD Bullion always has had great stock in. Uh, I can't show you every one of these guys, so I'm sure the other guys may have a little bit more or less. Let's take a look at in stock silver. And. Uh, 10 ounce pant bars, that's in stock stuff, but hang on, let me just go to silver bars and let's see what they got in silver bars. Uh, let's see, one ounce, no, 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 one ounce silver rounds, silver, sorry, that's the more prevalent product. Take a look at silver rounds, look at that, notify me, notify me, notify me, you know what that means? They're running out, they've, they've got some uh, one ounce uh, sunshine walk and liberty rounds it looks like right here, but look at the price of that. Man, it's like seven bucks over, folks. Uh, they happen to, they probably just found somebody that, a supplier that had some of these, the reason they can offer them. But look at the frickin' price. One to 19, 25 bucks, I guess 500 plus. Um, so they must have bought it, got a nice, well, chances are uh, an allotment just came in, but they're gonna sell through it real quick. 500 plus, look at all the notify me. They don't have it. Uh, not so bad in the uh, silver market, and uh, I mean the gold market, but again, gold's getting tougher to find for a lot of these products too. Uh, supply and demand factors uh, may also hit the gold market as well if they keep these prices artificially low like they have been. All right, let's take a look at uh, uh, yesterday's video, or actually Thursday's video, I'm sorry. Um, and uh, let me sort by newest to uh, oldest. And I'm going to go down to the bottom of the page here, folks. Get a little dizzy when I do this, so forgive me. Uh, la, 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 la. Uh, thank you, Welco Services. I uh, hope you got a couple rounds. Uh, take advantage of these prices, but I'm telling you, uh, oh, four bucks over. That's not bad. Get them while you can, man. That's a good deal. Uh, is silver really running low everywhere? Yes, it is. Absolutely. Uh, thank you, Silver Liner. I did make the video, and, and you made yourself a nice deal. Um, was that yesterday's video? I feel like I answered this already. Premium's jumping around. Oh, gosh. Let me look. Hang on. I think I'm uh, re-answering another video. Oh, there we go. There we go. Sorry about that. <laughs> I, I said, damn, those look really familiar from the other day. Uh, sort by newest first. Sorry about that. All right, let's go down to the bottom here. I'm not sorry. <laughs> Remember that, Pee Wee Herman? Okay. Oh, man. Uh, again, thank you, everyone here. Salute and cheers to all. Let me get a sip of coffee here. Uh, speaking of coffee, Stephen W. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Um. Bring up the words, I measure silver in pounds and ounces. Awesome, Michael uh, Macau. Uh, Mac no, Mikal. Macau, I think I pronounced that right. Good, keep stacking, dude. Uh, I got a kettle, <laughs> tar and feather, I you like that. And uh, yeah, Rick Rule says, uh, 350 million legal million US owned physical silver is what, Rick? Oh, that's interesting, I never, half of 1%. Yeah, yeah, that's a very small percent. Very small percent. I've been saying that is that a lot of stackers wonder why you know people don't understand the gold and silver markets. We are a small community, folks, but growing, growing really fast. You know, maybe half percent of one percent, but I bet you it was even a lot less than that several years ago and even longer. Uh, Rafa got Guarez. Um, hey, thank you. Yeah, we do. Unfortunately, uh, we had issues with a lot of different countries as far as. Uh, um, our website goes, you know, getting like these bombardment attacks that would shut it down and stuff from different places. So we pretty much limited our viewership to uh, uh, the continental U.S. and, uh, the, you know, some of the place, you know, some other countries as well. Uh, but if you're getting a block, it's probably because uh, on our website, it's probably because 
Um, you have, uh, oh, what is that thing that uh, changes your, or, or changes uh, uh, your IP or something like that, a VPN. You may have a VPN or you may be trying to view us from outside the country, and I'm do sorry about that, sorry about that, but it's something we have to do, otherwise uh, every day we'd be screwing with it. Uh, Oregon Matrix says, I love my eagles, there's a method we shall see in the end. Lo Thank you very much, uh, Fiat Petrodollar goes under. Uh, I've talked about that a lot in the last year, the, the petrodollar, that's what we've been talking about. This is a, this is a war, this is a, a money war between uh, central banks all over the world, uh, and they use us to fight their stupid wars. Uh, and suffer for them. Suffer, yeah, that's a better word. Uh, keep up the good work, you too, sir. Thank you for commenting. And by the way, please hit that comment and like button. I really appreciate that. And the subscribe button. Uh, comment, like button. Uh, yeah, comment. <laughs> the like button uh, and the subscribe button. And uh, please comment. i got a lot of lovely commenters out there. Uh, thank you, show, show, uh, show, show. I appreciate that. Uh, what is the best way to buy gold or silver? Uh, here, I'm going to give it to you in one, one paragraph or one sentence. Buy the least expensive premium of an industry recognizable product that you can find. And you can back up the video and listen to that to a few times, and that is the best advice I can give anyone out there buying gold and silver physical. Uh, Jeremy says, so Brian, if someone want to trade silver for gold, can they give a buff spot for the silver right now? Trade silver for gold. Uh, yeah, it depends on the product. Some of the products you can. Silver Eagles, for sure. I'd get rid of Silver Eagles if I don't know. I wouldn't want to own them at these prices. Uh, I, I mean, I, I would want to own them, but I'd want to take advantage of these stupid high prices and, and, and trade them for more silver. Um, yep, Jeremy, that um, I have to think about that. Again, depends on the product. Uh, plunge protection team. Oh, there you go. Someone else that gets it. Buy the bonds, prop the market, be a good central bank, and enforce the bullshit. Yes, Tom, absolutely true. Uh, oh, Herbert was bringing up, that was a pompano at the beginning of the video the other day. You know, I went back and reviewed it. I'm so used to seeing uh, Cravalli Jacks uh, that I saw the quick flash and it looked like a Cravalli Jack. But yes, it was a pompano, which is really a great eating fish and a great fighting fish as well, uh, especially on small, uh, small gear. Thanks, Herbert. Appreciate that. And you probably know that. You're a fisherman if you spotted it. Uh, Wall Rig Street Banksters. Yep, absolutely. Jojo, I knew something with Tulsi after. Yep, I did too. Uh, go Tulsi. I stand with Tulsi when it comes to the war. When it comes to her economic views, not so much, but when it comes to the war, a lot of respect for that woman. And uh, she's not anti-war, she's just anti-stupid, all right, um, when it comes to war. Consider my first answer. All right, any preference? Um, I would say just buy, again, I said it uh, once already, I'll say it again, is uh, buy the least expensive premium for an industry recognizable product that you can find, on uh, both in gold and silver. Uh, the rumor is ACS will be uh, U.S. currency is when a uh, big whale. No, that's never going to happen. Uh, it are, what am I saying? Is uh, it's already <laughs> stupid? It is a currency already. Not a currency. It is a coin. It's a legal tender coin. You can take that anywhere in the world, and uh, uh, not anywhere, anywhere in the United States, and spend that for a dollar. Supposedly, I'm not sure many stores would recognize it, but it is a dollar denomination. You could trade that back for a dollar. It has a dollar. So it already is a, uh, a circulating U.S. money, all right? Um, but uh, that's not why the big whale wanted the ASCs. I think the big whale wanted the ASCs, uh, it, it, not I think, I'm sure, is because of just a misconception of what they really should buy or they weren't led, uh, you know, in my opinion, they weren't advised properly. That's the reason they bought Silver Eagles. Um, all right, thanks for commenting, Wesley, and good luck. Uh, appreciate that, and uh, you're going to enjoy owning metals. Just don't pay too much for stuff. Everything is ridiculous in the world. Why uh, SH or Lint Silver be crazy? And uh, yeah, it is going to be an interesting year, Liquid Electrum. Uh, keep playing. If you don't play, you can't win. Uh, Bitcoin price is just about, if not worse. Yeah, I've not been following Bitcoin, but you know what? I actually haven't looked at it in a while, uh, a while in quite some time. Um, um, buying thousand ounce big bars tomorrow. Go, yep, Darren. That's actually if once you've got so many smaller bars, uh, especially if you're buying a lot of silver. When you get into the thousands and tens, of, you get into ten thousand ounces or more in silver. You probably got enough kilos and ones and tens and stuff like that. At that point, you can start stacking thousands. All right, uh, because you got all the smaller one increments that you need in your lifetime probably. Uh, but good idea. Uh, but remember, remember, thousand ounce bars are difficult to ship, difficult to sell, uh, and you got to find the big dealers to buy them. But again, expensive to ship. Uh, that's the downside. But a thousand ounces of anything is expensive to ship now, so I guess it's all relative. Uh, but no, a thousand ounce in one package. You know, like you could ship uh, FedEx uh, freight, and you can ship uh, UPS. You know, fifty pound boxes, seventy pound boxes. But once you get into a thousand ounces, you're getting into freight 
prices, which, you know, quite a big difference there. And you got to get insurance on top of it. You don't want to ship it uninsured. A lot of the logistic difficulties with big bars, uh, but not for a whale, not for someone buying tens of thousands of ounces. It's, it's actually smarter for them. Uh, 1980 silver coming. Yes, what's up, John? Blackbeard, the pirate, would turn in his grave. Every good pirate turns in his grave watching how, how the good guys have turned into the bad guys. Uh, you'll say, at the interview, you say if you're buying 2,500 ounces or more of silver to contact you, so for the everyday Joe that can't afford that kind of money, you're pretty much saying, no, I'm not. Come on, Scott. I, if you heard it that way, I do apologize. Maybe uh, it was the uh, way I said it or something, but not at all. You know, people are actually, uh, actually uh, uh, surprised that, you know, I will spend as much time with the guy buying an ounce of silver uh, as I do with the guy buying 1,000 ounces of silver. Really, really. Uh, it's important to me, you know, given that I have the time to do it, um, but uh, uh, no, I don't discriminate on that. The uh, uh, concierge bullion services, uh, we, we have one commercial rare coins and precious metal. That's my primary uh, uh, brick and mortar store. We are a brick and mortar store. We are not set up to do small sales at all on the internet. We just, we don't have the logistics and the capability to do it. It's quite an expensive setup to do. And you know, quite frankly, there's, you know, between Atmex, SD, and JM Bullion, they got the little market kind of cornered right there. They're very competitive. And it's, you know, and local dealers should be very competitive. And that's what we are here at Commercial Rare Coins. Uh, however, I, you know, I started thinking there's a lot of big deals out there to be had. And the logistics are, it's, it's just as easy to sell 10,000 ounces of silver uh, uh, over the phone. Uh, than it is uh, on uh, uh, one ounce of silver. It really is. Uh, it, it, you know, there are some little differences in logistics and shipping and stuff, but it's just as easy to do one or the other. Uh, so, you know, I, we do large sales, and we always done large sales over the phone, uh, but that's what concierbullion.com is, is for uh, folks that uh, uh, are buying larger quantities that don't live in our South Florida area and uh, that we can't service, or that we can service like that. Well, anyways, uh, sorry, uh, sorry if it came off that way, but nothing like that, sir. Thank you for commenting, Scott McNeil. Appreciate this. Silas says, second year robot, more queens and queen goings and eagles. Good for you. Um, uh, as far as weight, yeah, stick with the kilos. Have to agree with that. Uh, tropical Bay downpours in Florida are the, here's the Dillon Tropical Storm. Julie became, yep, yep. Uh, here we go. Stop hating, start loving the outflows. Anyone who doesn't love the weather in Florida is invited to pull up. His <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I like the uh, sunnier days rather than, but I grew up down here, so. Uh, but I still like the sunny days as opposed to rainy days, you know. Uh, that was a pompano nut. Yep, absolutely. Thank you. I got that. I got that. Michael Matthews, Max Stack, what's up? Uh, yeah, that's uh, something plus twelve dollars. Wow. Yeah, they must need them. Uh, but I certainly uh, don't like the idea of selling those to my customers. Um, I've seen the buy prices up uh, over that at some point, but they're crazy. That's stupid. Stay away from those, Mac. Get rid of your silver eagles. Trade them for uh, uh, bars. I'm staggering when a can might be similar, but nothing's ins insignificant. Everything you do is important in the long term to your uh, financial wealth, especially when it comes to wealth preservation, which is gold and silver all about. Uh, yeah, uh, one ounce gold is is 200. Yep, they're over 200 in some places too, Wildcat. Uh, uh, Christina, uh, if they're billionaires, they don't worry about 30 bucks. Yeah, but they're not doing 30 bucks. Think about if you're going to buy, you know, 10,000 ounces. Uh, say you're going to buy a million ounces. Why would you pay 20 bucks more, 10 bucks more? What does that make? That's 10 million. No smart billionaire would give up an extra $10 billion in premium that they didn't have to. That's what makes me question a billionaire buying overpriced Silver Eagles and 90%. Makes me question it big time. Uh, I can't argue with that as well. Hey, listen, I'm going to call it quits. It's Saturday. I'm going to go work on my uh, Trans Am uh, uh, conversion I'm doing, and I've got a race car I'm working on as well. It's a hobby. Haven't even been in it yet. One day I'll, I'll get on a racetrack. <laughs> uh, that's it. I'd like to say all you folks out there in Wall Street Silver, thanks for watching my videos. And I'd like to thank the forum moderators, moderators for allowing me to put my videos up there. Um, and uh, who else? All my viewers on this particular channel right here. Thank you very much. I appreciate uh, uh, your views. I haven't really seen two comments out, many comments, but I'm going to start looking for the comments as well. You can also find me on, I just opened this up. I'm going to change the profile and stuff like that. Probably put the business profile up here, but uh, there you can find me on uh, on Twitter. Believe it or not, can't stand the platform, but uh, you know, hey, and just another way to reach out to people. Uh, and that's it, folks. This is Brian Kuzmar with Commercial Rare Coins and ConcierBullion.com saying, think for yourself, question authority. <coughs> And uh, if you live in South Florida, or if you don't live in South Florida, uh, and you're buying more than 100, and don't take this the wrong way, you're buying more than 100 ounces of gold, more than 2,500 ounces of silver, <coughs> excuse me, silver, 
Uh, contact us at concierbullion.com. Go to our page here, concierbullion.com. Uh, we have a contact phone number. Uh, if we're not in, leave a message, and uh, also you can type it in here. Again, uh, we ship anywhere in the continental U.S. Uh, we deal with bank wires and checks and stuff like that. Uh, Old-fashioned method is not an online business. It's just the old way of doing business on the phone. Uh, and we can do it for larger deals. Uh, if you're not buying more than 100 ounces of gold and uh, uh, 2,500 ounces of silver and you live in South Florida, come to our brick and mortar store. Even if you don't live here, uh, if you come, you know, if you ever come to South Florida, visit us at uh, Commercial Rare Coins and Precious Metals. There's, there's our brick and mortar. Uh, call us at 954-493-8811. We're open 10 to 4 Mondays through Fridays as well. Uh, and uh, we're a full service shop when it comes to bullion. We, you know, a dollar's worth of silver, a million dollars worth of silver. We can service all of you folks, and we treat you all the same, too. Really, we do. Hey, listen, thanks for watching. This is Brian Kuzmar uh, calling it a weekend, and I hope your day is wonderful, and I'll talk to you on Monday. Let's see what happened to these markets on uh, Sunday night. I'd be curious. Bye now.